So guys, before I begin, if you can, please share and comment on this video, subscribe to the channel and smash the like buttons. So guys, we've got a new story coming in from the Northwest and a man has been jailed for life for murdering his girlfriend following months of abuse before he looked to shift the blame onto her during his trial. Kevin Mannion, who's 45, stabbed Eleanor O'Brien in the groin in a rage-filled attack after the pair rowed in his city centre apartments when she questioned him about seeing other women. Liverpool Crown Court had heard that Mannion killed the 22-year-old Ellen after committing several assaults on her throughout the eight-month relationship. And just two days before murdering her, Mannion, who was previous conviction for violence, stabbed Eleanor in the chest. She had previously complained to police about being a victim of domestic abuse but was too frightened to name Mannion as the perpetrator. However, Mannion called 999 just before half 12 in the afternoon on August 16th last year after stabbing Eleanor in his apartment in the Great Northern Tower just off Dean's Gates in Manchester. He initially told officers she had been accidentally pierced by something in her belongings when he had thrown her bag at her during an argument. However, during his murder trial, he said he had no idea how Eleanor had been injured, insisting he found her lying in the hallway outside the flat before getting help. At one stage, he even suggested she inflicted the wounds herself. So jury found him guilty of murder, wounding with intent and controlling behaviour following a three-week trial, and he was jailed for life and ordered to serve a minimum of just over 23 years. So just want to say rest in peace, Eleanor, and my condolences go out to your family. So a little bit further into this story, guys, so within 30 minutes of stabbing her, knowing exactly what he had done, Mannion actually called his solicitor to make sure he was ready for the inevitable court case. During this time, Mannion concocted increasingly desperate stories in a selfish bid to save his own skin, but it was obvious that Eleanor, who was a younger woman more than two decades his junior, was terrified of him. She did everything she could do to avoid Mannion's wrath, knowing just what he was capable of. When she used to get questioned by friends and family about her injuries she suffered at Mannion's hand, Eleanor invented a violent ex-boyfriend to try and explain away the black eyes and bruises. She even went to a hospital and used a false name as she was petrified at the thought of being seen with police and being labelled a grass. She also made up stories to cover for Mannion's violent rages. Even when she was laying in the ambulance fighting for her life, Eleanor refused to name the man who had inflicted what proved to be the fatal injuries. She was described by friends and family as a bubbly person. She had an infectious smile and she lit up the rooms that she walked in. But little did they know, she lived this eight-month relationship with Mannion in terror. It's believed that she'd been unlucky in a previous relationship where the previous person also instilled fear in her and was very controlling. Also, she was reluctant to report his behaviour to the police. So they both met in around December 2021, Christmas time, and her family actually remembered her saying that she had a new fella in her life who was called Manny, Kevin Mannion. So Kevin Mannion is from Salford. He had a previous conviction of being involved in a fight with two doormen at a bar, as well as being involved in a New Year's Eve brawl over a domestic matter. Mannion and Eleanor had known each other as friends, but decided to embark on a relationship, and the pair bonded over a shared interest in fitness in the gym, and they would regularly attend mixed martial arts classes. Mannion said the pair would regularly spar together, sometimes with their bare hands, but later on, Eleanor became Mannion's punch bag. Neighbours who lived next door to Mannion described him as a scary neighbour. He was often the subject of noise complaints with screaming and shouting being heard coming from the apartment and on one occasion a neighbour texted her boyfriend who was away to chronicle the noises coming from the flat. She wrote, currently having a sat by the door sig scary neighbour is being a nightmare this weekend. Last night he was screaming threatening to glass his girlfriend when I woke up he was screaming the loudest I've ever heard on the phone to a calling or a stupid bitch and now she's round and they're on the balcony and he's loudly telling her how horrible she is. One day she even went to a doctor and she told the doctor how her boyfriend had beaten her up the previous weekend. She said she was unable to hear through one ear and having difficulty opening her jaw and she'd considered going to A&E but she thought they would ask her 
loads of questions. Manny admitted that he was responsible for the black eye but maintained he'd only slapped her once to calm her down after she'd turned up to his flat drunk in the early hours. Upon having discussions with her doctor, she was referred to Manchester's Women's Aid, which is a charity that supports victims of domestic abuse, and she told him that she'd been subjected to domestic violence from her ex-boyfriend, a man called Paul Trainer, but Paul Trainer didn't actually exist. All this time, it was Mannion inflicting the abuse on her. Again, one of her family members questioned her with regards to a black eye that she had, and again, Mannion maintained that he already slapped her to calm her down because she was hysterical. He said he raged at Eleanor after she had lied to him about when she returned home after attending a baby shower with friends. He called her very horrible names and he said, don't talk shit about me or I'll smash your head in. He was very horrible to her. There was a lot of domestic violence in this relationship. There was a time when neighbours heard the couple on the balcony and they heard someone shout, go on, then jump, before they heard a woman reply, maybe I will. There was one incident on August the 13th where they met with friends and took a short journey from the apartment to a bar on Peter Street. They then returned to Mannion's flat before their friends left at around half one in the morning and at some stage in the early hours of the morning, Mannion stabbed Eleanor to her left chest. After seven o'clock, she took an Uber to a refuge in Withenshaw, texting Mannion to let her know she got back safely and that she loved him so much Mannion did not respond. Later, she googled hospital times and what happens if you get water in a stab wound in the shower. Eleanor went to hospital and told doctors she'd been involved in a fight. She provided hospital staff with a false name and she had provided the hospital staff with a false name. On August the 16th, neighbours heard screaming and shouting coming from Mannion's apartment. The arguing had begun in the early hours and continued into the morning and by noon, according to one neighbour, it was really ramping up. It was at 12.16 that day when Mannion called 999 and he said, please come. There's blood everywhere. She's been punctured in the groin. Please come. She's been cut with a sharp object. She was picking her stuff up. I was throwing her stuff, telling her to get out and something punctured the groin. I'm begging you to get someone here. So during the sentencing, Judge Neil Fluitz, KC, said Eleanor was a vulnerable young woman. From the age of 16, she was involved in an abusive relationship with another man. I have no doubt she saw you as someone who was able to protect her from future harm. Sadly, did not prove to be the case. The judge said her death had a devastating effect on her family and friends, especially her mother. Eleanor will be missed but never forgotten by all who knew her and loved her, especially her mother and her siblings. Their grief is your responsibility and I hope over time you will come to acknowledge that fact. He said that Eleanor was trapped in a relationship and though he could not be sure that Mannion intended to kill her, it did little to mitigate. He said Mannion was thinking only of himself when he made the phone call to his solicitors in the moment of the stabbing. The judge added, the benefits of remorse was lost during your conduct during the trial when you seek to shift blame onto Eleanor, suggesting the stab wounds were self-inflicted. As I said, he's been jailed for life to serve a minimum term of 23 years and 9 months. Guys, really sad story there coming from the northwest. I just want to say rest in peace, Eleanor, and my condolences go out to your family. Just stay safe out there, guys. Eleanor's cousin, Molly paid tribute, said that she was always smiling and fun-loving. She said, Ellen was absolutely beautiful, stunning. She had a whole life ahead of her and it was snatched away from her in a cruel way. Ellen was a real fun person. She was very open and friendly and it's horrifying to imagine this man controlling her and bullying her to the point where she felt she couldn't safely leave him. Her funeral was absolutely packed with her friends and family all distraught and we threw vapes on the coffin along with roses and she would have smiled at like that. She would have loved that. We don't want her murder to become just another statistic on her behalf. I would like to ask women to stay away from abuse. Please take that first step before it's too late. We all miss her so much. All we can hope for now is to save another life on her behalf. What a beautiful thing to say. So guys, some real sad news there coming out. How could a man take the life of such a beautiful young woman? Once again, rest in peace, Eleanor. And my condolences go out to your family. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.